Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Aviance here to enlighten y'all on some unknown history in regards to the Montgomery bus boycott. This week's African American hero was known by the name of Claudette Colvin. Some people might think that Rosa Parks was the first to refuse giving up her seat, but not in this case. It was a 15 year old girl named Claudette Colvin. In March 1955, which was nine months prior to Rosa Parks refusing her seat, Ms. Colvin stood up for her rights and what she believed in. The reason why most of us are blind to who Ms. Colvin was is because the National Public Radio felt that Rosa Parks would be a better icon for the movement. In research, I discovered that Claudette was a pre pregnant high school student and Rosa Parks was a middle class working woman involved in the same exact case. It was said that Claudette woke up for school and boarded the bus with her friends, which was a daily routine. Then the young ladies were approached by a white woman who demanded they give up their seats. Claudette's friends immediately stood and regrouped to the back of the bus, while Miss Colvin refused. Her, her friends began to look at her as if she was crazy and the bus driver then stated that they would call the authorities and when the authorities arrived they proceeded to remove Claudette from the bus forcefully. At that very moment it was obvious that no one of her time possibly could understand the reason why she would stand up for her rights. In modern days we deal with numerous occurrences which authorities are called on, which we all know can escalate the situation entirely. The first thing we get is a lot of backlash in the matter of questioning. Why did you do this? Or what made you do ID, that? Sir, his driver's license. Keep your hands where they are, please. Yes, I will, sir. I'll keep my hands where they are. Please, officer, don't tell me that you just did this to him. You shot four bullets into him, sir. It happened in an instant. An end of the school year pool party erupts into screaming and shoving the latest fuel of America's lingering fire over race and justice. 15-year-old Jajaria Beckton, wearing the orange bikini there, thrown to the ground by a white officer. Seconds later, the situation escalates as Officer Eric Casebolt pulls out his service weapon. Well, in this instance, Ms. Coven, who was also 15 and pregnant, said, and I quote, I felt like Harriet Tubman's hand and Sojourner's truths were holding me down. She felt inspired by two African American heroes of her time to stand up for her constitutional rights. In my opinion, I think it's really shocking how a 15 year old could stand up for something she believes in based on some somebody in her community teaching her this. She said that she learned deeply in detail on the stories of what happened with Harriet Tubman and Sojourner through her teacher during school lessons. After she was manhandled off the bus, it was said that instead of being taken to a juvenile detention center, Coven was taken to an adult jail. And she said that the only thing that was inside of the small cell was nothing but a broken sink and a cot without a mattress. She described it as being really scary and she was very frightened. She said that the cell reminded her of one of those old Western movies and she felt like one of the bandits that they throw in jail. She then said that she waited for three hours until her mother arrived with her pastor to bail her out. After Coven was released from prison, there was Phil that lied in her home. Members of her community and family members acted as lookout while Coven's father sat up all night with a shotgun. With Miss Coven being the first person to be arrested for challenging Montgomery's bus segregation policy, you would think that it would kind of surface the media back then. But in this case, she really wasn't put on a broad spectrum. It says here that she only made it to a few local newspapers, but nine months later, Rosa Parks, it wasn't all the way until 2009 when the writer Philip Hughes published a book about Miss Colvin's story. Now, 
let me remind you that this incident happened in 1955 so you get the broader picture of the situation that it was stretched all the way to 2009 before she was even heard about that's crazy mr who stated that he wanted the 15 year old story to be heard because not only was it the first cry for freedom but without her he felt there would have been no rosa parks or a dr king So to conclude this lesson, I have discussed how Miss Claudette Hogan was the first person to stand up by sitting firmly on what she believed in. Sounds like Miss Colvin was a life changer to me. This is your brother Avian signing out until next week's discussion on another life changing African American hero. Peace out.